Hey fellow Star Wars fans, are you as excited as I am about the upcoming television series Ahsoka? I'm stoked. I've been prepping by catching up on some animated stuff to get to know Ahsoka better. Watching her got me wondering, what the heck are those things on her head? Let's explore. Welcome back to the Nerdy Naturalist channel, where we examine pop culture from a biological perspective. For our Ahsoka analysis, we'll use both Star Wars canon and legend sources, and compare it to some real examples of what we know from Mother Nature here on Earth. Before I get into it, let me just say some of these Star Wars names are new to me, so forgive me if I pronounce them weird. Don't make me destroy you. First, as a refresher, we were introduced to Ahsoka Tano in the animated Clone Wars when she was named Anakin Skywalker's apprentice Padawan. Ahsoka is of the alien species Togruta. The Togruta are sentient humanoids native to the planet Chile, which is part of the expansion region of the galaxy just beyond the Inner Rim. The Jedi Master Shakti, who was featured in Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones, is also a member of the Togruta species. All members of the species have the red skin with white markings, which is supposed to be a form of camouflage when they hunt rodents in the red and white grasses of their home planet. Togruta have white and blue fleshy appendages from their heads called leku, with pointed horns on top called montrols. What's on their head is not a headdress. These are actually part of their heads. The leku and montrols continually grow until the Togruta has reached maturity with females generally having longer leku than the males. In the males, the leku may branch. The leku on Togrutas are in threes, with two in the front and one in the back. A single leku is called a lek. All over the internet, I read the leku referred to as head tails, which doesn't make sense since tails are by definition extensions from the rear end of an animal's body. Also, here on Earth, there aren't any animals with tails on the head. Unless, of course, it's a birth defect. There have been several animals with non-horn-like structures extending from their heads. The Parasaurolophus, the hadrosaurid dinosaur from the late Cretaceous period, had a distinct head crest. There are several hypothesized functions to the head crest, including sex identification, sound amplification for communication, and thermoregulation. But what is the function of the leku? I would argue that the leku may help with balance. We've seen what an acrobatic fighter Ahsoka is, and perhaps the Leku help with that. In nature, we see lots of examples of animals having a tail for balance. We see this in kangaroos and in cats. When you see a cat walking along something narrow, its tail acts as a counterbalance to prevent from falling. A cat's tail also helps with its ability to hunt efficiently, allowing it to accurately pounce on its prey. The Ahsoka show will feature the character Hera, who is another species called Twi'lek. The Twi'lek have Leku in twos. In the extended Star Wars universe, the Leku and the Twi'lek are said to be highly sensitive and potentially prehensile, which means they have the potential for grasping. Opossums and New World monkeys like howlers or spider monkeys have prehensile tails, which allow them to grasp things or hang. We have seen in the animated shows that damage to the Twi'lek's Leku is deadly, suggesting they are highly essential and sensitive. If in the Togruta, the Leku are in fact a sensory organ, they may help with their ability to access the Force. The Montrals may help with that too. Now the Montrals are said to be hollow with several chambers. Humans have hollow chambers in our skulls, which are our sinuses. Our sinuses function to make mucus to drain out our nose in order to clean out bacteria, allergens, and other pathogens. The Togruta Montrals look horn-like, but they don't function as horns, as I have never seen or read anything about the Togruta using their Montrals as such. Togruta Montrals are a little showy, or more like casks, like we see on hornbills or chameleons. Often with casks, the enlargements on the skull of the animals may be used to identify sex, maturity, or status. They may also be used for combat or thermoregulation. According to legends, the montrals are sensory organs that allow the Togruta to sense movement through passive echolocation. You may be familiar with bats using echolocation to find food, but more comparable to Togrutas may be species with enlarged heads like dolphins and toothed whales, which use high-pitched sounds to detect objects they may not be able to see. They do this by squeezing air through nasal passages near the blowhole. This generates sound waves that pass into the forehead where a blob of fat 
called the melon, focuses it into a beam. If that beam of sound hits something, it will be reflected back and picked up by the animal's lower jaw and passed to the ears. With better balance, a higher sensitivity to the force, and the ability to echolocate, it's no wonder Ahsoka is an elite Jedi. It was fun examining Ahsoka a little bit. Perhaps we'll learn more about her biology with the show. If there's another Star Wars character you have questions about, please leave a question in the comments. I'm biologist Dr. Ped Danishkar, and if you enjoyed this video, press like. And if you want more examination of pop culture, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.